have something about <clears throat> I get eyelash in my eye? No, but you've got oh, a lot yeah, that are super me. close. <laughs> Shut up. Let's talk about how we monitor our kids' devices. Marcos, our oldest, he has a cell phone. He got it this year when he started school. And I think he was one of the last ones in his class to actually get a smartphone. Yeah, he was on our case for a while. But yeah. he got one this year. We were a bit hesitant because we there really are a hesitant. lot of really bad apps out there and the internet has a lot of stuff we don't want to look at or be exposed to yet. So we spent a lot of time looking at our options for like parental control monitoring apps and and uh, and found a lot of really really bad ones i installed a lot i tried the free trial first because we were willing to pay for it because like, if we found a good one we wanted to like be able to do this right but so many of them are so bad like one actually locked down the phone i had to like <laughs> set it to factory reset because i couldn't get control of the phone again yeah so we're gonna show you how we monitor our kids devices with a better solution than that A lot of you are probably thinking about getting your kids a phone for Christmas. So we're going to walk you through how we use Google Family Link to monitor our kids' devices. Yeah, and we're just going to talk through the features of the app and, and how we use it, how it's useful to us. It is worth noting that if your kids have an iPhone, then it won't work for those devices. But you, as an observer, as someone monitoring your kids' devices, you can have an iPhone and it still works on, mm -hmm. on your device. In terms of setup, you and your kids need to have a Google account. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna go through that in detail here, but we did cover it in our Google Calendar video. So if you need help, then go check that one out. Otherwise, basically the setup consists of installing the app and logging in. Let's, uh, let's look at it. First thing you see a picture of your child and then you can manage the settings, which you will go into a little bit later. Let's just go through it. Then you have location, you can see exactly where they are, but only if they have their internet on. So when he has his internet on, which he has most of the time, I can see when he's at school, when he's in his, like his sports, when he's at his friend's house, and I can see where he is, which is really nice. Yeah. First part of the experiment is you put your phone in your pocket and then you go put your coat on and your helmet on and then you go ride your bike for three minutes and then we're going to tell you where you went. And he's off. <laughs> it looks like he's crossed the street again. No. school. Okay, Marcus, have you stopped your bike? Yeah. You're at the gas station. How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> then it has an overview of today's activities, so you can see app by app and minute by minute how much time they're actually spending on the different apps. Now, the good thing about Google Family Link is that you can set limits for each individual app. And in most cases, we've got like a 30 minute limit for the games mm -hmm. and he's only been allowed to install a few games. Um, and then you can also set an overall limit for you know how much screen time he can have on a given day. If you push the more button here, then you go into that activities, it sees all the activities that you've done that day. And then you can go yesterday, last seven days, last 30 days. You can kind of get a good overview of, ah, oh, he actually uses this a whole lot more than I thought, or he's pretty good, you know? Then you can click limits and here you can set the limits for every individual app or have it be limitless. Next up, <laughs> locking the phone. Right now the phone is unlocked. If I feel like I've called him down for dinner a few times and he hasn't <laughs> answered, this has happened, then I simply say, okay, lock the phone. And yeah. then he's like, mom, he's like, would you come down for dinner, son? Yeah. If it's they're really out nice. of control, then it's nice to have like the, the panic button. <laughs> it, it happened once, but still, I'm happy to be able to do that. Then next up is daily limit. So I mentioned this earlier that you can set a limit for the total amount of screen time that the kids can use on a daily basis, regardless of which app they're actually using it on. If you click edit limits, then you can actually do that on a day by day basis. So we have in our family uh, a couple of like screen days per week. So Wednesdays and Saturdays are screen days. And then it makes sense to give them maybe a little bit more leeway on those days to use their smart devices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It also allows you to set a, a bedtime. So regardless of how much time, how many minutes they've spent on a given day, you can set limits for when basically they can start using the phone in the morning and when they have to stop using it in the evening. Yeah. So when it's bedtime, the screen is when we say it's bedtime and they can't <laughs> access anything other than making phone calls. That's really good to know. You can always make phone calls even after bedtime and you can always make phone calls even when you've exceeded your daily limit 
We did a video on why you can't quit your phone and in that video we talked about a few different ideas for how you can limit your phone usage or screen time for yourself on a given day. One of those ideas was to charge your phone outside of your bedroom. And that's actually something that we've agreed on with Marcus that you know when it's bedtime, when the phone turns off, you don't bring it into your room, but you charge it in a centralized location. And the thinking there is is basically that, you know, in a few years, we'll give him a little bit more leeway in how he can use his phone once he's learned how to be accountable. And at that point, we want to have enforced the rule of like, you charge your phone in a centralized location. We don't have smart devices in our bedrooms. Do your kids have smart devices? Which rules do you have in place in your home? Please let us know. In the comments below. <laughs> Okay, right, next part, next part. Um, apps installed in the last seven days. So here you have like a list of all the different apps that have been installed on the phone in the last seven days. Now we haven't even talked about how apps get installed because they can't just install any app they want. Whenever they have an app they want to install, they have to request it from you, you get a text and then you say yes or no. That, and then they can go That's what I was gonna say. I, I, like, I did this like, oh. <laughs> uh, but then I just made it look like I was gonna scratch my nose. Well. You have a pretty nice. Yeah, well, thank you. And and you have a very good way of getting across what we wanted to get across without me needing to butt in. So <laughs> what what's the app? Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario. I played that one when I was a kid. <laughs> On the Sega. Sega Sega! Anyways. Okay, and then you get this here. Do you wanna ask in a message or do you wanna ask me face to face? Because if, if he pushes face to face, then I have to like type in a code that I've probably forgotten by now. But if he asks in a message, then I get a notification on my phone. Boop. Next up, you have the more technical settings. And there's one feature here that is super useful if you're like running late for school. Well, not you personally running late for school, unless you're a school age kid watching this video, then you might be, okay, you get the point. If you're, <laughs> Or if you just misplace your device a lot of the time, <laughs> if which anybody kids do. has misplaced their device, then you can click the play sound button and it will play a sound as you would expect and you will be more likely to be able to find the phone more easily. The other options in here, you don't really need to use a whole lot. We have set the location settings to be highly accurate so that we can pinpoint exactly where our son is at mm -hmm. any given time. Very big brother of us, but you know, sue us. We're his parents. <laughs> and then it's just help and feedback and privacy and, you know, and all those like, things that they who, have to put in there. Yeah, like who 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 uses that? In the beginning, we had managed settings. That one I have used. Oh, so. did we just jump over that? Yeah, we did <laughs> for a reason. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to that one. So manage settings because that's a lot more technical. So in here, there are a lot of things you can fine tune to fit your needs. So for example, the filters on Google Chrome. Here you can allow all sites. Uh, try to block mature sites, allow only certain sites, so you can really make it so that when they uh, when they surf online that they can only access like the things you want to do or that does its best to block the things you don't want to see. We just decided to block internet altogether. So yeah. we just disabled that app and that function so we don't use this. Other things in here, well, filters on Google search. We're not using that right now because he's not searching. Um, you can add the Google Assistant, different Android apps. That's just a list of all the different apps that you have on there if you want a different access point to them and a lot of other small details that you might want to look at. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for your likes and subscribes. We love having you on board with us. If you're looking for a tool on how to manage your family's time and all of the things that you do as a family, either together or separately, then we made a really good video on Google Calendar and comparing that to Cozy Family Organizer. So check that one out over here. And then we'll see you next week. Bye. A little bit closer to Christmas.